Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about this little joker here. This is the STM8S001J3. A very very long name for such a small chip. Let's uh, have a close up at uh, at this chip. It's an SOIC8 uh, 8 pin package. Um, yeah, there's not not that much interesting to say about the package. Uh, you probably have seen one of these before. It's the smallest uh, STM8 microcontroller from ST and uh, it's a strange little device. Um, if we have a look at the data sheet, uh, I can probably show you here. Okay, so this is uh, the data sheet. The data sheet is only 85 pages long and for a microcontroller that isn't that long actually. Um, the pinout, which is the it is it is quite funny. Have a look at pin eight here. You got PD five, you got PD three and PD one and PC six. We have four pins uh, or four, four GPIOs connected to one single pin. So if we combine all the or count all the the GPIOs and power pins on this chip on this eight pin package, we come to a total of fifteen pins. So what is what has happened here is that. ST have taken a 16 pin IC or probably even more pins or GPIOs and squished it into an 8 pin 8 pin SOIC package. Just imagine for a second that conversation. Say, hey guys, we need um we need a smaller package. But yeah, but the chip is uh, has a lot of pins. What what can we do? I would just combine them. And I, I I know I know this is what you do with small packages that you have multiple GPIOs connected to a single pin. I know that that is perfectly normal. But there have been a lot of design considerations going to which pins should be allowed on the outside world of this chip. And um, let's take pin eight again for as an example. PD one here is also uh, the swim connector. Swim is the the debug interface. And if we take an AT tiny. For example, you have the ICSP header, the, the SPI header uh, connect, connected to the outside world. And that, that actually gives you a lot of problems because you need to take into consideration uh, pull ups, pull downs or whatever features you have connected to your pins. Um, so what I like about the STM here, is, STM8S, is that we only use one pin for the debugging. Um, that can still cause problems, but but uh, as far as the, the pin consumes uh, con consuming goes, it's a bit better than you using all pins for the for the debug interface. So we got um, a bit strange here. We got the VDD, the the positive supply on pin four, and we got the negative VSS on pin two. Pin three is reserved for a stabilizing capacitor that connects to pin two. So. All you need to get this uh, little thing running is actually just a 100 nanofarad or 1 microfarad uh, capacitor from pin 3 to 2. And you can see here, if the camera will focus, you can, uh, can't really see. There is a small capacitor between pin uh, 2 and 3. So it has an internal oscillator which can run up to 16 megahertz, which is actually pretty impressive. Um, and if we look at the, 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 the data sheet again, um, we have a lot of functionality connected. Uh, we have I, I, I square C and we have, we have SPI, but it's not a full duplex. You can do half duplex SPI ish something because they left one of the pins out, uh, connected, uh, unconnected. So, um, there are a lot of notes attached to this data sheet about what you should do with all the pins. And this note here is especially interesting. All these port here, all the GPIOs here, uh, should be configured after device reset in output push pull without low state, uh, with output low state to reduce the device consume consumption and and all stuff like that. It says here the GPIOs mentioned above are not connected to pins, and they are in input floating mode after device reset. So that means that these pins are actually in the silicon, but they're not connected to anything. So. Maybe it's not even a 16 pin package that has been squished down to an eight pin package. Maybe it's even more. Um, so yeah, uh, they have taken some interesting choices. Also this, um, 
remind you, the, I'm going to remind you, this is the official documentation or the official data sheet. I haven't heard of an unofficial data sheet, but this is the main data sheet. This section here under the swim interface is also pretty amusing here. Um, it says, if the swim pen should be used with the IO pin functionality, it is recommended to add a five second delay in the firmware before changing the functionality of the pin with swim functions. This action allows the user to set the device into swim mode after the device power on and to be able to reprogram the device if the pin with swim functionality is set to I.O. mode immediately after the device reset, the device is unable to connect through the swim interface and it gets locked forever. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so this is the data sheet. Uh, guys, I know you have <laughs> a lot of pins going on here. Um, yeah, this initial delay can be removed in the final locked code. So you can basically, if you mess your code up, you can turn this chip into a one-time programmable device. Um, this is, of course, a feature. It's not a bug. Uh, we have to remember that. Um, yeah, but but apart from, from some pretty interesting um, choices here, um, the chip is actually pretty capable. I mean, I mentioned the 16 megahertz uh, internal oscillator. You can run down to uh, 32 kilohertz, I think. Uh, the reason I, j I, I looked into this chip uh, was that I was going to use, uh, I was looking for a small chip for a project. And uh, that project required 5 volt interface. And all the STM32 parts are only 3.3 volts, and I didn't want all the hassle to uh, to level convert and stuff like that. That uh, also I have some some power uh, requirements that I have to meet. So I was looking for a low power uh, processor, and I've started using the STM32s for a different project or some different projects with the uh, with with touch screens and stuff. So I wanted to see if we can find a small chip that can solve my problem and I, I know that TI and uh, Atmel chips um, a lot, there are a lot of options available here this is just one of them and I just thought I would make a video about this little fun chip here um, anyway Cube IDE uh, which I'm using for the STM32s uh, as far as I know only works for the STM32 parts so I needed to find another way to program this thing uh, Cube IDE is, is free and I might be overlooking something. It might be able to do the STM8 just as fine. But I found another way, which I'm going to uh, show you. So IRR, IAR systems uh, have a product called the Embedded Workbench, or EU for short. Um, and the nice thing about the Embedded Workbench is that you can get, uh, you can get an STM8 version, which is fine. We can just have a look at that. Uh, let me just show you my screen here. So I'm uh, going to products here at the IR.com and go to uh, the embedded workbench here and I find the STM8 uh, series here. And you can download a free trial, but you can also have a size limited evaluation called the Kickstart Edition. Uh, and the only limit limitation is that you have an 8 kilobyte code size limitation. Uh, of course, no support or no limited technical support, as I said. Um, so, um, with this chip is so small anyway, so we're not going to hit that 8K limit uh, no matter what. So, we can download this software and... I don't know if you have um, if you have used IRR, uh, the embedded workbench, uh, before. You'll know that it's pretty tightly coupled with their uh, license manager. So you need to register. It's free. You can just um, get a key um, and yeah, and install that the Kickstart edition. You get the key right away. Um, so I've done that. And uh, let's start the EU. Uh, there was no workspace file now. Okay, so I'm going to create a new project. Uh, le let's make that a C, plus, uh, C project here. And we can just call it, uh, let's make a folder here. Uh, STM8S test. Like this. And inside that, we can just create a project called test. Um, so now we get uh, the usuals. Uh, we have a main.c file, and we have inside that main uh, file, we have 
our main function. Um, you'll notice that right away we return zero. Uh, so we just add a line saying while one, uh, and then we just get stuck in here. So I tried this before and I wrote uh, just like this, true, but we don't have any definition of true yet. Uh, so we will return an error. So now we have some uh, functioning code. We can right click here and go to options for our project. And you can see that the device is unspecified. So we can click on this button here and go to STM8S and find this. Uh, you can see there are a lot of chips. We have the topmost, it means that we probably have the smallest chip in the family. Uh, the J3 is a designation I don't know anything about. So if you have a comment uh, or know this, leave a comment and tell me what it is. I'm not very familiar with all these uh, STM processors yet. So we're all learning, right? Okay, so we have set the device. And if I go to debugger here, we can go uh, and select the driver. And that usually it, yeah, default, it defaults to simulator. But we can use an ST-Link uh, as our debugger driver. That means we can actually get our code through the ST-Link down to the chip. So I press OK here and uh, it updates the, the, yeah. If we go back to the chip here, I bought this a long time ago. This is a, a cheap ST-Link. Uh, I got it off eBay, it's a few bucks. Um, actually, it's a pretty nice thing to have. It supports both the, the swim interface and uh, it got 3.3 uh, volts and 5 volts and also the the regular debug interface the with the sw clock and swdio uh, pins um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect uh, the power of the chip here let me see here i got a brown that is pin 2 like this and i got pin 4 this is a power and then the third pin here, that is the swim interface. That's going to be pin eight, like this. Okay, so this is all it takes. I have the the SC link, which is, I mean, it's really cheap. Go get one or five. I don't know. Uh, we have the the SOIC and we have three connections. That should be all that is needed. Oh yeah, and and the decoupling cap, uh, the hundred nanofarads or. Yeah, I think it's 100 nanofarads or one microfarad. Uh, it's a fairly standard um, capacitor. Let me just plug this into a USB plug. Yeah. USB device recognized. Nice. Okay. So back in the in the code here, we can just press download and debug. Uh, we want to save this. Uh, let's just call it test. And let's see here. The code is probably uh, complaining because we never get to return zero, uh, but we know that. So now we are in debug uh, mode and we can actually see that we are waiting at this line here, waiting to start. So I can press uh, go here and you cannot see it, but the ST link is flashing uh, blue and red. That means that we have a connection uh, and it's monitoring the system. We can also break. And we can see we are still inside the while one loop, which is nice. So we have confirmed that we have a connection. We are ready to program. But uh, this chip is quite capable. We have timers, we have uh, ADCs, we have a, a lot of interesting stuff stuffed into this chip. But it would be nice if we have some uh, some libraries for it. And there is. We have the, the ST, um, STM8S standard peripheral library and in the next video i will show you how to to find that it's not very really hard uh, and how to use that to get some uh, sense out of this chip so with that um it's an interesting little ship here it's really inexpensive um uh, you can have a, a look at look the price up um it's about half a dollar uh, for a chip maybe a little more two thirds of a dollar. Um, so it's really, really uh, cheap to, to get this chip. The, um, the ST-Link is maybe $5, maybe even less. I, I haven't looked it up yet uh, or in a while. Um, so you can get started programming real or 
Well, you can also start programming Arduinos, right? But you can get started programming inside a real um, IDE f on a physical, on a real physical chip, really, really cheap. Um, yeah. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use the peripheral library. Um, yeah. Until then, thanks for watching.